Hi, my name is Dan. Welcome to my shop. If you're new here, this is where we are building a model airplane right now. We are scratch building a Ryan's Rebel. And if you are interested in scratch building model airplanes or model airplanes in general or wanting to learn how to build, then you need to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right down there and the bell. And that way you'll be notified every time I create a new video for you. And uh, it's been about weekly right now, and I want to try to keep that pace as we work our way through this airplane. But uh, maybe we'll have to speed it up a little bit because I kind of want to get this plane done. The flying weather is starting to get nice outside, and got to get this thing off the ground, right? So anyways, today we're working on the fuselage sides. Um, I've got one of them. I've started one of them laying it out here. We're going to lay out the second one. I'm going to do it right on the... Uh, right on the camera for you so you can see where how we're doing that. But I did find something interesting about this uh, plan. And uh, well, I'll get to that in just a second because I need to show you parts on the plan um, and what I'm talking about. So let's get to that right now. All right, so we're working on the sides of the fuselage right now and I discovered something. This is one of those things that, you know, typically when you're working with a set of plans, you usually find one error in the plan and it wasn't so much an error because I see now the correction to it but the problem is is it should have probably been enunciated in a different way than it was shown so what I'm talking about is this and you know I know that there's about three or four of you guys out there that I know of that are following and, and building one of these right now too and I bet you you've come across this and that um, the fuselage length of the sides that are on the plan are actually larger than a 48 inch piece of wood that it was called for to come from. I'll show you what I did here. All right, so here we have, this is one of the sides that I've already assembled the doublers onto. But uh, what I did was this. Um, I figured out that this is actually let me see here. That's got to be 48. This is like 49 and a half. <laughs> the piece of wood that it comes from was, uh, I believe it was 8 by 48. Let me see if that's what it calls for. I believe that's what it was. Though. All right. Let's look right here on the plan. Uh, balsa sheet. It was one of the weird sizes. see here it's one eighth by by okay so oh just look here few sides here we go right there you see what that is one eighth by six by 48 this is the balsa sheets and uh, <laughs> those equal the fuse sides now the funny part about that is this is more than 48 inches long and so what I did was I thought yeah well what the heck it's longer and um, I just went ahead and made a piece. There was, I mean, there was so much of this that was kind of cut off uh, because of the way that it narrows and tapers down. So I was able to just take a section of it and I just butt glued it right onto the end right here. I didn't think anything of it. I thought, yeah, no problem. I figured out here on the very end where this is going to be, it'll be very secure because the joint is here. And you can see right here, it's got some of these. These are one quarter inch uh, triangle stock that's gonna be there. There's also gonna be a plate that sits down on top of this. This part here is gonna sit right there on top. And then uh, on, after that is there, there's also gonna be the stabilizer will sit on there. And then the bottom is gonna have a piece of plywood under it in this very same section. So there should be plenty of strength to support this joint that I put in. But just so that you know, you're gonna have to do that. Uh, you're gonna have to add a little bit on there. The main thing that's important about the fuselage sides is you have to make a designated left side and a right side. And what I mean by that is that these, okay, so this one here, I've already glued the wood to it, so it's committed at this point. But this is going to be the right-hand side of the fuselage. So I'll show you how that's gonna go here. Okay, so this is the overlay, this is the overhead view on the fuselage. So the way that this goes is, you can see the outside line is right here. This is the outside 1 8 inch balsa. 
and then right immediate inside of it is this doubler. That's what this is right here representing. So what we're going to do is when we go to build this thing, we're going to set it right on top of this plan and it's going to be right on there. So anyways, this doubler needs to be on the inside. That makes this the right hand side outside. And that means that this one here needs to be built much in the same way, but this doubler will be on the inside of what will be the left hand side of the fuselage. And this doubler is to add strength in, in the main section of the airplane. Also up in the front, the firewall is going to go on and that's uh, where the uh, engine will attach. So of course we got to make that, it's got to be stronger and that's why we've got this plywood here. Then the second part we're going to do is, I've got to go find it. I think it's still in the box, but I've got to put the doubler back here. This is the doubler for the um, stabilizer will sit here. So there's a doubler to help add strength to this part where the double, where the uh, stabilizer goes on. And also, as we have found out, it's supposed to double and strengthen that joint that's supposed to be back there that's not on the plans, but is shown with this line right here. So, <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, let's go ahead. I'll go get the parts ready to be glued here. So the parts we're working with here on this part of the assembly is the doubler that's going to go on the inside of the uh, fuselage side here. And, um, and then also we'll be putting the uh, separate piece down onto the stabilizer. This will go in the part of the fuselage where the stabilizer is and going to give a little bit more strength and reinforcement to that area. So anyways, let's go ahead and start with this part. And this is kind of like uh, we did back in kindergarten. I don't remember making airplanes in kindergarten though. That would have been awesome. It's my favorite part, cleaning off the stupid glue nozzle. have that down what I like to do is just go ahead and take my bare finger and spread this glue out and you kind of want to have just a thin layer of it all the way down here I'm just going to paint it on I'm making some really happy trees while you're I'm just kidding <laughs> This is the therapeutic part of building model airplanes. You get to have these happy moments of spreading glue all over the doubler. Ah, it's so relaxing. was going to be too much so you're going to just take it and move it around a little and it's kind of funny as I'm getting it wet with this you can see what it's doing to the wood how it's kind of bending it and that's going to become a problem when we actually go and set it down on the surface I'll show you in a minute let's just finish spreading this all over the place here first now, yeah, you can see how this doubler has got some pretty serious wow in it from getting wet. And that's what wood does. So we got to bend it back and tell it who's boss. All right, so take the reference points, which are going to be the front points of the firewall. And then also it's going to be back here where this little notch comes up there. This will be the back of the wing saddle in the plate. So the wing is going to ride on top of this. Try to make it even with the uh, top of there. And get it pretty much as set as best we can. Now 
Now, something that uh, a lot of people don't take into consideration is when you stick a layer of glue down, this thing becomes very slippery. So in other words, I've seen people do this before. What they'll do is they will put the glue on it and then they'll clamp it and then they'll just walk away from it and leave it. And uh, normally that'd be okay, but sometimes with that little layer of liquid glue in there, it will actually move the wood slightly with that clamp on it and then eventually it hardens and you find out that it wasn't in the right spot uh, because it slided, uh, slid over from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of wrestle this here. I just kind of sit there and do this and see, I can hear it pushing out air bubbles. That's kind of interesting. Anyways, kind of do that until I could feel it starting to give me more friction. Like, okay, I'm not gonna move anymore. Got enough of that liquid shoved into the wood and uh, thinned it out enough that it's not gonna move anymore. So that looks like it's pretty much going on now. And here's a little trick. It'll help you set the thing down and make sure that it's not going to keep that warp in it. I go and I get every little paint can out of my cupboards. These are all paint full of enamels and other paints. Um, put them in there, set them right on top. Oh yeah, see this stuff here? This is that flex seal stuff. It's heavy. I'll go ahead and get everything in there. And I'm gonna let that sit. Once again, right now, I'm just kind of going around and making sure the position of everything, making sure that this doubler is pretty much lining up correctly with everything as far as the outsides of the side go. And then we'll let that sit. Now it's ready to just kind of uh, rest at this point. Uh, I'm going to go down and put the stabilizer down on the other end here. We'll go ahead and do that right now. But um, once that's done, I'm going to come back here and kind of make sure that everything is still, like I said, <laughs> having a layer of glue in there makes this uh, piece somewhat mobile on top of there. So you want to be sure that it's not going to go anywhere before you say, okay, I'm going to let it dry now for a few hours. And um, anyways, that's pretty much that part there. Let's go to work on the stabilizer down here. All right, we are back and we're going to put the stabilizer piece on. Now this is just a, uh, just a small piece of plywood and it goes right here and it looks like it's actually going to be, yeah, put it right in there just like that is where it's going to go. All right, so same thing, spread some glue. You see that okay? Just kind of taking and spreading it out. Now this is the wood glue. Wood glue is cool. Uh, remember when we were in school, I just used to love this kind of glue because it's the kind of glue that dries on your skin and then <laughs> you can peel it off. Peeling is fun. Okay, see what I'm doing here? I just kind of take that and I keep rubbing it back and forth until I can find, feel that it's kind of getting some friction and then I'll try to make that the actual set point. And I'll take, I'll run my finger along there to get that excess that's kind of popped out because that will dry into a hard piece of something and chances are I'm probably gonna have to stick another piece of wood up against it or something like that. So this kind of helps to get rid of that. Okay. Kind of happy with that set. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Um, that's pretty much for it, for that. I need one more can. Oh, here's another thing right here. This is another thing that gets used quite a bit for holding things down. This is a Ziploc bag that I'm getting a bunch of glue on now. And the Ziploc bag is full of lead shot. 
from uh, Shotgun Shells. You can go to a hardware store or a, um, excuse me, a sporting goods store and buy lead shot that's used for reloading shotgun shells. Put it into these bags, custom size them yourself and stick them right down. And now all that weight is spread out over the uh, doubler that's in place there and it's gonna dry in that spot. Perfect. Yay. Okay, uh, that's it for this. And um, we're gonna let this sit overnight now and uh, finish the curing and I'm gonna go get some sleep. Oh, that's so fun. Love peeling glue off myself. It's glue, it's, glue. it's not a booger, okay? Anyways. Hey, thanks for stopping in today and, and uh, checking in on me. Um, it was kind of interesting though. I, I did want to let you guys know about this little thing about the piece of wood being longer than the actual template and that there, you were going to have to make some kind of a modification to make it work. I went ahead and just used a butt joint on the very end. I don't think that that's going to be a problem, but looking now it makes total sense where i could see where i i just didn't see that line before where the author put it or the designer had put it and um you know maybe it's because i didn't look at the instructions because i'm a man and i don't look at instructions i guess but i should have maybe i should have in that case but anyways thanks for stopping in today uh, we're going to let this all cure up and then we'll start working on putting the fuselage sides, sides together in the next one. And there's going to be some tricks involved with that. I'll let you in on it. But uh, until then, let's get building. So, yeah, I pretty much figured out that if I say the word recording, it will shut off. Oh, it didn't do it just there. Well, that's really weird. Well, what a dumb feature that is anyways. I mean, geez, all you gotta do is say the word recording and it's...